Hello, it's John Guinan with Interventional Radiology again, and we're going to talk through this fairly complex case of uh, symptomatic portal hypertension in a patient with um, hepatic cirrhosis. So this was a lady who was coming in needing large volume paracentesis, uh, also had a history of esophageal variceal bleeding, and so they were looking for treatment for both of those things. So here's our diagnostic CT scan. Uh, actually, this is our arterial phase. Let's see if I can find the venous. Yeah, so what we see when we look through this um, is, I mean, the thing that's jumping out to me initially is how huge these uh, varices are. So remember, this is a venous predominant uh, timing of imaging. So we can see that the portal vein is enhancing and then there's these massive gastric and splenic varices. And if we go up, there's big enhancement around the esophagus. So these are all the esophageal varices, uh, some of which have been banded, but obviously there are deeper ones that cannot be banded by um, EGD. And then also there's a large uh, volume of ascites in our typical you know, nodular hepatic, um, liver. So the reason that we as interventional radiologists get this imaging before doing a TIPS is it helps us to plan our procedure. So the goal of TIPS is to basically um, give the blood uh, a route back to the heart which doesn't have to pass through this fibrotic nodular liver because that's the reason you know that restricted flow through here because of just the physical firmness of the tissue is causing a backup of blood which increases the pressure which makes these big abnormal varices and also that increased pressure lets some of the fluid cross that venous um, membranes and then creates ascites so we need to combat that we create a new path for the blood to kind of bypass the liver going through the liver and the goal is to go from this right hepatic vein typically and create a new connection to the right portal vein so that some of the blood can go through that stent and get right back to the heart and not have to go through the fibrotic capillaries of the uh, liver. Uh, what made this patient even more difficult is not only did she need a TIPS procedure but with how huge these gastric varices are the body had already created a spontaneous splenal renal or gastrorenal shunt. So instead of blood flow going you know, towards the liver, flow had actually changed and is going towards the stomach and the spleen and going through this irregular connection to the renal vein, which is right here. Right here, sorry. Um, and then bypassing the liver that way. So when people have large gastrorenal shunts, uh, they can have confusion issues because they're already you know, skipping the liver. And if we put a, just a tip stent in, there might not be enough forward flow to keep it open. And if we only close this without doing the tips, we would probably make these massive esophageal varices even worse and potentially increase the risk that she'd rupper. Uh, rupture, excuse me. So we had to do these two procedures in combination. So a TIPS and also what's typically termed as a BRTO or balloon occluded transvenous retroglade obliteration of the gastrorenal, um, spontaneous gastrorenal shunt. Um, we don't typically use a balloon anymore to occlude that um, connection. Uh, what we do instead is use a plug, so some people will call that a parto, um, but that's the goal. We want to stop the blood flow from skipping the liver, and then we want to push all the blood flow back towards the liver, and then we are going to give uh, the body a new escape route, so to speak, by shunting between the right portal vein and the right hepatic vein, so that the pressure is better, more blood is going towards the liver, and then hopefully we'll decrease the size of all these varices and uh, stopping her from creating ascites. So that's the goal and how we do that is we use image guidance uh, to do accomplish all those things. So
what we do is we um, get access into the jugular vein and then put a catheter down into the heart and eventually get access into the right hepatic vein. And we know it's the right hepatic vein because when we have this AP view, we rotate the imaging unit towards the right. And so we get a lateral view or an oblique view. And if this catheter continues to go posterior to the spinal column, we know it has to be in a posterior position. And the most posterior hepatic vein is the right hepatic vein, which is where we want to be. So we're happy with our location of our starting point. And then we do some things to help us giving uh, something to aim at. So we can blindly poke around for the right portal vein, but that's not as efficient. So we'd like to have a roadmap. So what we do is we inject some CO2 gas into the hepatic vein once we've wedged the hepatic vein kind of into the smallest part of the vein we can go. And the, the goal is when we inject the gas, some of it is because it's so low viscosity, some will reflex across the hepatic sinusoids and then go back into the portal vein and give us something to look at. So on our first injection, it looks like we didn't get the catheter wedged enough, so all the gas just went right back into the hepatic vein and towards the heart. So we'll try again. This time we got it wedged a little better. And you can see instead of, some of it still goes back towards the heart, but it also pacified some of this sinus. And you can see it outlines the portal vein here and then kind of more centrally. So this is the right hepatic vein, or excuse me, right portal vein coming together. We may have done a third one, I don't remember. Nope. So after that, we kind of have a rough estimate of where we need our access needle to end up. And then from that point, it is kind of just time and changing our angles a little bit each time and using our needle set to try to poke into that vein. And then, you know, so we kind of blindly throw a needle through to this area and then we'll connect a syringe to the back and kind of aspirate as we pull the needle back. And once we get some blood flow, we'll try to inject a little contrast to see if we're a pass by in a portal vein. If we are, that's our spot that we're taking. So, oops. This is our portal venogram. So we did just as I said, we put our needle through and aspirated as we came back. And once that needle tip gets into a portal vein, we'll aspirate some blood and then we stop and don't move anything. And we'll take a little picture to see what, if are we in a hepatic vein or where are we? And we just so happened that we hit that right portal vein in a great spot. So from there, we have to get a wire down through the, hepat or through the portal vein into the superior mesenteric vein, which we've done. And then we use the little balloon to kind of balloon up that tissue track. Because remember, we're going from the hepatic vein to the portal vein, and it goes through some uh, liver tissue in between. And it's not a normal liver, so it's very fibrotic and firm. So even just to get a catheter to go over the wire, we typically have to balloon it to give ourselves a little more space, which we did. And then we take a portal venogram to again get the lay of the land and see what's going on. So you can see we've accessed this right portal vein. Here's right, here's left. And then you can just see how massive all this lady's gastric and splenic and esophageal varices are. I mean, as we inject, it immediately, there's equal blood flow going back towards that splenorenal shunt as there is to the liver, um, which is kind of impressive. So we know what we have to work with. So after these images, I think we went to the other portion of what we were trying to do, and that was to stop that spontaneous spleenorenal shunt so that all the blood flow goes towards the liver and not you know skipping everything by going to the renal vein and then back to the heart so we got a sheath in from the groin and then wire and catheter access into this right renal vein which is here and we're trying to go up into this spontaneous shunt which is probably right about here just getting images of the lay of the land here 
and sometimes it takes more effort than we'd like but eventually we got a wire up here and we're able to get a big sheath into that spontaneous spleenorenal shunt once we have access we want to stop the outflow by putting an embolic device sometimes people use coils sometimes people use a balloon to blow up here which they'll take out later or sometimes people use plugs which is a big uh, occlusive device and that's what we did in this case is we used a plug to stop the outflow and then the goal is to get medicine a sclerosant into these varices so that they scar down and we don't want that sclerosant to go into the systemic circulation which is why it's important to get a good plug in place um, so since we had access from the front so to speak and the back uh, we could give our medicine through the TIPS access site, which is what we did. And we also put some coils in there to make sure it didn't reflux towards the liver. So the medicine, we used some uh, contrast and some air and then that sclerosant to coat those gastric varices so they scar down and all the medicine stays in place because the outflow is plugged with the plug. And then once that was done, we want to finalize our tips access by putting the stent into place. And then our final picture, we took, there's still a little flow towards these uh, varices, but now that there's an outflow um, that's going to have less resistance than this, these will ultimately shrink and uh, everything will go towards the tips. So I know that was a lot of talking, but it's a, a good explanation of you know, portal hypertension and what uh, are some of our two biggest um, therapeutic options are for it. And we happen to do both in the same patient. So kind of interesting, definitely was a time consuming procedure, but ultimately she had a great outcome, which was good.